calling their office all week. Left many messages for him, never got a call back, ended up meeting him in a different meeting. I informed him there were no services available. He acted like he had no idea what was happening and that all he knows is what LASA provides. So I'm going to state this. Having gone through project room keys, having gone through the past week trying to get people housing where there is none, there is a complete breakdown. And it feels like we're doing a lot of talking about what it is, but there's not an actual part, point, specific place where anyone can actually connect. So I'm not going to like grill everyone, but I am going to say this. If before you leave, you could give viable, correct, open information to Sean, to Tracy Park's office, so Tracy Park knows where her constituents can go find shelter in any of these programs or get these services, this is my thing. When I call 211, they say LASA says to call St. Joseph. Mm -hmm. St. Joseph is not, and first of all, that's another side note, but I think that the county needs to just pull their contract and do nothing. Jack shit, excuse my language, jack fucking shit. They help you. <laughs> well, Lincoln and anyway, they let her continue. Yeah. They, they, they have a hard so just to leave the actual information so that we have somewhere to send people to this work. Can, 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 excuse me, can I just yeah. say one thing? Yes. You have my card, so yeah. you and I will definitely yeah. be doing a one-on-one. -on -one. I really need to reiterate in this room, because I know Sean is back there, we work very closely with CDLA. They said we, we have, have no it. information. We work so I want to show you how we can do. I have and complete I, and comprehensive information. And I want to keep the and question is very clear. Complete and comprehensive, very respectfully. Citizen. Go. Why they they so while there's two one one, and you're telling me that two one one really hasn't been as thorough as it can, there is a it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work. work. Okay. At all. So I, I, work. I hear you for each time that you say it doesn't work. And what I'm not gonna do is say, well it does, you should try this, you should try that. I'm gonna show you where you can go. How about that? There's you two You have another alternative to 211. So while we fix the issues with 211, because there was an issue with 311 too. 311 is for um, debris and cleanup. But people would also tag 311 as an encampment. Well, the sanitation team can't just go clean up the encampment because it's for someone who lives. They can only do debris. So we're figuring out those kinks so we can make those city um, things that we make available so, to you sorry. work. Sorry. But the only way sorry. that we know that they work or don't work is for you to actually tell us, right? So as you're telling me right now, look, I because I'm meeting you today, then I have a responsibility to make sure that we get back to you, right? With what we can do to make it work. So I'm acknowledging you, your name again? Sarah. Sarah. Susan. Susan. I'm Stan Becker. And Stan. Thank you, ma'am. You all said it doesn't work. Give me a chance well, to make I, sure I, you can I have information to share with you. Um, one of the other things, I'm going to trip myself up over here. Oh, sorry about that. That's okay. Um, the other side that I went to, it may not look like I went to a new slide, but I have. We currently work with eight service providers. What we're doing is we are expanding our network. So we have about 14 new service providers that we're bringing on into the city um, so that we can expand the work that we're doing. Because you can only imagine if we keep going back to the same service providers, they're gonna say, I'm all tapped out, we can't see anybody else so in case manage. So we knew that we had to expand our bandwidth to take in more folks, because after all, there's 46,000 folks that we gotta get to, and so we gotta increase the amount of help and resources we can get. And then we're focusing on housing navigation, so reducing those barriers um, that exist from transitioning people from interim housing into permanent. There's about 6,000 units or beds of affordable, permanent, supportive, and interim housing that are in the pipeline right now. I know that doesn't say 46,000, but we gotta start somewhere. So 6,108 beds are now in the pipeline getting ready to come out. And we're gonna continue um, building on the amount of housing that we need. Now, is that 6,000 entry level caseworkers per unit, uh, per uh, uh, homeless person? I'll, no, the ratio is one to 20. Please continue. One to 20. Um, the incident in response team, so we have a response team now. It was something that we didn't have before. Unqualified but the response level. team is a team that is part of our USC. team here that goes out to every campus. You know how we the before and after photos? We have a team that goes out to say, okay, let's go back to that area and make sure no one has set up camp again. 
And that team is going around and doing that because what we found out was that it happens somewhere else. Make sure that we keep Federal. monitoring those areas. Federal. Because what usually Indian happens Indian. is if you go to an area and you get help, you go tell your friends, don't you? And then your Can friends say, well, I'm going to come back to where you were because you got help there. What we don't want is for encampments to come back. So our team goes out to make sure that we catch even the first hit 